Hi guys, this is Edward and welcome to this new video of our platform again. So on this video we're going to be working on the prayer scene and we will be adding some basic movement to it as well as a jump it a double jump. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I will do is create a few platforms here so we have something to test and play around with the player. So I'll go ahead and add a child node by right clicking on our main node here then on add child node and let's select a static body 2D which is under physics body 2D. Hit create and I'm going to right click on it and let's rename it ground zero. And let's now go ahead and add a shade to this node. So right click add child node and we can search for a collision shape 2D. And this is exactly just the node we want. I will hit create, right click on it, and let's name it shape. And as a shape, we're going to assign a rectangle shape to D. And we can see it right here, and we can change its size with these handles. And I'm actually going to manually set its size to 250 by 10. Let's select our ground zero node. And click on this icon here, which makes sure that its children are not selectable. And I'm going to drag it and move it to right about here. I want to also hide its children and I'm going to select the node and duplicate it by hitting Ctrl D. And I'm going to place this node to right about here. I will select the shape node and I'm going to make the rectangle shape unique so the changes we make here don't affect the other node. I'm going to click on it to edit it and let's set its extent to 100 by 10. And now that we have a few platforms to play around, we can create the previous scene. So click on scene, new scene, and the main node of our player is going to be a kinetic body body. So as its root node, I'm going to click on other node and we want to search for a kinetic body body to the node. Click on it and hit create. I'm going to rename it player. And I'm also going to add a collision shape to D. Hit create. I rename it shape. And let's assign a new rectangle shape to D. Click on it to edit it. And I want to set the extent to 7 by 14. Let's zoom in towards our shape. And I'm going to click on this icon here which shows a few snapping options and we want to turn on use pixel snap so we can move all of our nodes pixel by pixel like so and I'm going to place our shape right above the kinetic body so that the player's position represents the bottom center of the shape we can go ahead and save our scene and let's save it in the scenes folder as player.csn there we go, and this is pretty much enough for us to start working on our player script. And we're going to be adding the sprites of our player later. So on the player node, I'm going to attach a script, and I'll save it in the scripts folder as player.gd. And as a template, I'll be working with one without comments. Hit create, and that's going to open up our script editor. And I'm going to resize this panel here to right about there. And since we are not going to be changing scripts constantly, I'm just going to hide this panel by pressing Ctrl backslash. Now all of the resizing and moving things around in the editor are just need to be done once on the project. And if you want to use it on a different one, you can just go to editor and then click on save layout. Okay, so here on our pre-script, Let's create the function physics process, which gets called every frame during physics. And since we are working on a kinetic body, 
Here is where we want to be handling our player's movement. So for the kinetic body, there is a function named move and slide, which moves the body node around while taking care of the physics and the collisions. And we want to pass at least one argument, which is the linear velocity we want to be moving the body around with. So I'll pass velocity, which we haven't created yet. So up here as a property, I will declare a variable velocity equals to a vector zero. And on this function, we can also specify what is going to be considered as a floor and as a wall by this parameter here. And it is set by default to a vector zero, which is for a top down game. And since we are working on a platformer, we want to set it equal to a vector up, which is going to give us a normalized vector that goes up. And this function also returns the result velocity of the movement. So I will set the velocity equals to whatever this function returns. Now, if we play this, nothing is going to be happening since velocity is always equal to zero. And we want to change that depending on the player's input. So let's go to project, project settings, and on input map, we can add an action named MV left for move left. Click on add, and let's make another action named move right. And here for the move left, I'm going to add a key, which is going to be the left arrow. Click OK. And for the move right, it's going to be the right arrow. And we can close this panel now. And on our physics process function, we're going to ask if input that is action pressed. And the action is going to be move left. And if it's so, we're going to set the horizontal velocity equal to a certain speed. So I'm going to declare a variable up here named speed equal to 250. And when the left arrow is pressed, we will set the velocity that x equals to minus speed since we want it to move to the left. And if we are not pressing left, we want to check if we are pressing right. So we can say l if input that is action pressed move right. And if it's so, we will set the horizontal velocity to plus speed. And of course, this plus doesn't do anything, I'm just adding it to make the code a little bit more clear. And if we're not pressing any of these buttons, we want to set the horizontal velocity equal to zero. Now, to try this out, let's go to the game scene. And I'm going to hit F1 to switch to the, to the view. And on this file system panel, find the player scene and drag and drop it into the game scene around here. Let's go to the debug options and enable visible collision shapes so we can see them while the game is running. I will hit F5 to run the project. And as you can see, it moves left when pressing left and it goes right when pressing right. And it also stops when we are not pressing any of these buttons. Now we want the player to fall down, so let's go ahead and implement the gravity. I'm going to open up the player script. And I will declare a variable named gravity and set it equal to maybe a hundred. And on the physics process function, we are going to increase the vertical velocity by the gravity multiplied by delta. And we are increasing the value instead of decreasing it, because here in Godot on the y-axis going down is positive and going up is negative. If we go ahead and run the project, you will see that the player has already fallen down on the ground because of gravity, and of course we can still move around horizontally. Ok, so now we want to be able to jump every time a button is pressed. So let's go back to project, project settings, and under input map, let's add another action called jump. Click on add, and here on the jump action, I'm going to add a key which is going to be the up arrow. Click OK. And I will add another one and it will be the space key. Click OK. And I'm actually also going to add the Z key. So that every time we press any of these buttons, they are going to trigger the jump action. So we can now go back to the script. And in here, after doing the horizontal velocity, 
we're going to ask if input that is action just pressed and we're looking for the jump action and if it's so, we're going to set the vertical velocity equals to a certain force. So I'm going to create a variable up here named jump force and set it equals to, I don't know, 150. And we're going to apply the opposite value on the vertical velocity every time we just hit the jump bottom. And as I say, we are going to apply the opposite value because here in Godot, when the y axis negative is going up. Let's try this out, and as you can see, every time we hit one of these buttons that trigger the jump action, our character jumps, but it's not jumping high enough. So let's try and set the gravity to 150, and the jumping force to 200. And that kind of feels a little bit better. Now we can keep on changing these values and see how they look and go back and forth. And the thing is that it is really hard to get a desired behavior by using a gravity and a force. And that is because these values are not really that intuitive to work with. So let's take a look at this. What we are doing here is setting a gravity value and a jump force or a vertical velocity. And as you can see, the way the player is going to be jumping is a little bit unpredictable because, as I said, these values are not that intuitive to work with. And I guess that we can just keep changing them until we get something that we like, but I actually think that there is a better way for us to do this. So instead of defining the gravity and the jump force, it will be way better and more intuitive if we set how high the player will jump and how much time it's going to take the player to reach the jump apex. And then for these values, we will calculate the gravity and the jump force. So there is a kinematic equation that says that the displacement of an object is equal to its initial velocity multiplied by time plus the acceleration multiplied by time square over two. And if we take this to the context of our game, the displacement will be the jump height the initial velocity is going to be zero since we start from the ground, the acceleration is going to be the gravity, and finally time will be the time to reach the jump apex, which I'm just calling time jump apex. We can then remove the zero because it is doing nothing there, and we'll have that jump height is equal to gravity multiplied by time jump apex square divided by two. Now, we already know the jump height since it's going to be defined by us, what we actually want to find is the gravity. So if we just solve this equation for the gravity, we'll end up saying that gravity is equal to two times the jump height divided by the time to reach the jump apex squared. And that is going to solve it for the gravity. Now for the jump force, on the other hand, we have a kinematic equation which says that the final velocity of an object is equal to its initial velocity plus its acceleration multiply by time. And again, taking it to the context of the game, the final velocity is represented by the jump force, which is actually what, what we're looking for. The initial velocity, just as before, is going to be zero because we start from the ground without any vertical velocity at the beginning. The acceleration is going to be the gravity. And finally, the time is going to be the time to reach the jump apex. And after removing the zero value, this is what we ended up with. So the jump force is going to be equal to gravity multiplied by time to reach the jump apex. And now instead of setting the gravity at the jump force, we can define instead a jump height and a time to reach the jump apex. And using the kinematic formulas, we can calculate the corresponding values of gravity and jump force. And now it's going to be way more easier for us to get a desired jump since we can just define how high the jump is going to be and how much time it's going to take to reach the jump apex. So let's go back to the editor and put into code what we just learned. So I'm going to declare two variables, one then jump height, and I will set it equal to 65. In an other variable named time jump apex, and I want it to be 0 0.4. So it will take just 0 0.4 seconds for our character to go 65 pixels up. 
And we can also remove these values for gravity and the jump force since we are going to calculate then using gravity and time jump apex. So down here, the physics process function, we will say that gravity is equal to 2 times the jump height. Divided by time jump apex raised to the power of 2. And the jump force is going to be equal to gravity, which we just have calculated here, multiplied by time to reach the jump apex. And now, if we run our game, we will have our character jumping on a height of 65, and it takes him 0.4 seconds to get all the way up. And this is working just perfectly. But there is something that just doesn't feel quite right. And the thing is that our character feels like he's kind of floating a little bit. So let's take a quick look at what is going on here. This is what our character is currently doing. It is taking it the same amount of time to reach the jump as what it takes it to hit the ground when coming down from the jump apex. And what most platformers games do is make the character go down faster than going up. Just like on this one which is going down two times faster than going up and if we compare them both we will see the difference more easily. So back to the previous script, we want to create a variable named for multiplier which I will set equal to 2, so that the player goes down 2 times faster. And in here, before applying the gravity to the vertical velocity, we are going to multiply gravity by 4 multiplier if the vertical velocity is bigger than 0, meaning that it is going down. Otherwise, we are just going to multiply it by 1, which won't affect anything. Let's run the game to see how it looks like, and jumping feels way much better now, and less like just floating in the air. Well guys, that's gonna be it for this video. On the next video, we're going to pick it up right from where we left here, and keep working on the player's controller by adding a double jump, since right now we can just jump as many times as we want. Also, an horizontal acceleration, as well as the sprites and animation. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like this video and leave a comment if you have any questions. And until next time, see you later.